So this is a part two of the E3. Basically, the two games we want to talk about the most since we have large opinions on this. If mm. you followed Iron Box for the past uh, past year. <laughs> uh, firstly, for the 25th anniversary of Sonic the Hedgehog, there is a humble bundle featuring a bunch of Sonic games. Sonic the Hedgehog, 3D Blast, Adventure DX, CD, Adventure 2 with a DLC, Sonic Hedgehog 2, All-Stars Racing, Epi- Sonic for Episode 1, All-Stars Racing Transform with... With DLC, Twenty-five Episode Two, Generations with DLC, and Lost World. Mm. So that's if you, that's if between, well, pay whatever you want to ten ten dollars. It's all available now by the point of this recording. Pretty much, and pay more on thirty-five. Pay thirty-five dollars or equal to twenty-five pounds. You get an exclusive T-shirt. Yeah, I was gonna say that <laughs> the T-shirt does look good. I want that T-shirt. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but I don't have thirty-five dollars spare. Someone else buy it for me, please. <laughs> just, just, just kidding. Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you want a humble bundle, hum, Sonic humble bundle for the 25th anniversary, get it while you can. The, a lot of the games on here are pretty fucking good. Hmm. But anyway, Sonic Boom Fire and Ice at E3. Surprisingly. Hmm. So, so I'm going by uh, Jason Berry from Sonic Stadium's take on it. Apparently, it is. Pretty much mostly the same game. In terms of what it was based on. Yeah, in terms of design, it's mostly the same game. The level design, on the other hand, is smaller, so you don't have to look everywhere. There's yeah. less interactivity with a touchscreen, so you don't have to pull back on the slingshot. It just does it. And exploration is rewarded rather than mandatory, mm. which, even in the demo I played, it was just infuriating. I'll get this. Yeah, I got a 3DS. I thought the demo, but the thing about 3DS demos is that you have a number of a number of uses. All right. Okay. So, I, so it's like oh, like five uses. I played it twice, and you know what? It's Shattered Crystal is not really that bad, but it's just the no. whole playing for the levels. Like, when did this fucking level end? Yeah, it's way too long and way too much focus on exploration, especially when you're switching between characters. Yeah. But this one apparently. Focuses a, lot, focuses a lot more on the fire and ice elements where you landing, about to landing water, switch to ice, there you go, you can walk on it. It's basically like, if you go past what a series of water, you can turn that into platforms and then vice versa, you can melt them. Basically, I think the best comparison I can think of right now is the Ikaruga, where you have a black and white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Elements. You have to switch between them in order to actually absorb them. Yeah, so basically it's... you use the abilities for the right moments. Yes. So there's a lot more strategy involved, or even Sonic Heroes, we have to use fly and power and speed types for a certain point to level. Yeah. But this time, there's no, there's no big signs telling you, use speed! Yeah. yeah. What I find remarkable about this is, Fire and Ice has been kind of this sort of, it's been the odd game out, really, during this year. I mean, everything has been so focused on the 25th anniversary, and Fire and Ice is always, some people even consider it being, oh, why not? It's just canon. Nobody's interested. And at this point, it's like, no, we've been working on it. We've been developing it. We even pushed it back for a year because we didn't want to rush it. So it's... Yeah, even though there was rumors saying that, oh, we're probably not developing it. We're just holding it off to the anniversary. And you think, okay, then do, well, the worst... something, then do something with it then. Yeah, and the they, worst thing I heard... Sorry. So the worst thing I heard was somebody did an interview with somebody working on it, and he basically said, there's barely anybody working on it. It's like basic crew. We're not doing that much work on it. Thinking, oh, please, don't let it be true. Don't let it literally just be sitting on it for all this time and done now. But from what we heard, or at least hopefully, if anybody's actually going to see the difference from then and now, it has been worked on quite a bit. Yeah, originally it was going to release last November. Now it can be released this November. Yeah. I think. I need to double check the release date because it's, 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 it's the fact that it is Sept- essentially September this year. Yeah. Right. September, late yeah. September. The fact that being that they've made it clear is that this is the first time Sega's really done like we're pushing a game, you know, back a bit because we don't want it to re just spread out there for people just to rip on. Yeah, in the beginning of his art, based on Jason's take on it, it says a quote from Shigeru Miyamoto: "A delayed game is eventually good, a bad game is forever." Okay, no, I think it was that, a, that, and, that, yeah. and he says, if those were that necessary, just look at Jukum forever. I know. Also, also was, look at Nights into Dreams. That was delayed, but it, it's still kind of mediocre, but still good. Yeah, there's a difference. Although really, with Jukum forever, the problem was it wasn't delayed. is because they couldn't make their fucking minds up on what they wanted the bloody game to be. There's a difference. Yeah, three engine changes, three different sets of developers, <laughs> exactly. including a small 
home developer working on it because they won't let it go until it was bought by um, Randy Pit, uh, Randy Fit- Pitchford. Yeah, Gearbox. Yeah, but like I said, that's the difference. Really, there is there is a difference. <laughs> we'll do Nuka forever. <laughs> well, this one person wanted to get it out. The other people just wanted to see it happen. And yeah, one, that... person, one, one person is like, "We can do better than this." Yeah, but the fact is that it's now more or less. I mean, at this point, it's probably at the the finished state at this point so by the time it comes out people will finally get a chance to really know how good or whatever how quality wise how good the game is it's going imme- just... to be immediately compared to its other handheld counterparts and especially Shattered Crystal yeah I mean obviously the big thing is that I think people will kind of slightly overlook it because of again we're all so focused on the anniversary game whatever that's going to be but again the, the weird thing is is that the when you think about it, for the Fire and Ice, I think I've said this before, so sorry for repeating, but Fire and Ice really, the only reason it exists, partly because of Shadow Crystal wasn't terrible, and also the TV show is basically going like, oh, I guess people, if they like the show, they'll buy this game, I hope. Hmm. So if anything, you can see this more as in, because of the show's success, this game is arguably more of a tie-in to the show than, say, what was meant to be this big sort of multi... I mean, ironically, when you think about Boom, the idea of it was more like the Marvelverse thing. It was going to be diff- one big universe, but in different types of medias, of different stories. And very quickly, that just went, nah, this isn't going to work. Let's just focus on Yeah, more. the Rise of Lyrics, it seems to be, even though that seems to be like the canon one, yeah. Now I think it's been shifted all the way to like, oh, it's a side one. I mean, yeah. Shad Crystal could be because of the canon, because Lyric appears, then he's gone, Six is more involved, mm-hmm. and you have this, the TV show, and the comic. Yeah. But like I said, I see them more as they're all just doing their own different things with the same brand, essentially. That's the best way of saying it. So, like I said, the TV show has been the one success out of all of Boom, pretty much. So, Fire and Ice is arguably... Again, I'd be surprised if we even get another one after this, but Again, if I was given a chance to play this, I would, because it looks interesting. In particular, there's one boss fight in the game where you have to switch from Sonic and Amy, from, you know, basically the boss is a giant totem pole monster thing. How Crash Bandicoot. Um, in which you have to dodge his attacks and hit it, and particularly when Amy's turn, you have to do this thing where you have to bash the ground to get this pole up while avoiding all these ice cubes and stuff, and then use Sonic to get on top of it to stomp the enemy's head. The totem pole look kind of reminds me of the ones from Crash, um, Donkey Kong Country Returns. Yeah, but either way, you know, something that's similar style. Yeah, so even if it's going to be, this is two part, it's going to be Sonic and Crash anyway, and this is something of a question anyway. Yeah. Are you, has the E3 demo changed your, changed your perception on Sonic, on Byron Ice? Yeah. And also, will you be buying it? So <laughs> show, and will you be buying Fire and Ice based on the free on based on new information and E3. Yeah, exactly. But even better than Fire and Ice, and <laughs> even though even though that's been a bit preemptive set, is something that me and you have been stating so so many fucking years since 2010 when Skylanders first got announced. Yeah, pretty much. Well, ironically, two things that we sort of stated that might happen with this. <laughs> First of all, Crash Bandicoot is now in Skylanders. All from that, and it looks exactly like that one image that Vicarious Visions hand in their office as a joke. I think, that, well, it is a little different from that, but the fact that Crash is both in Skylanders and more importantly, is getting his own games, essentially in this case, remakes of 1, 2, and 3. Remasters of 1, 2, and 3, yeah. Exactly. So... We were first of all, we were fucking right. We fucking called it <laughs> six years in advance to when they actually did it. Yeah, so I mean, we he's... fucking called it. We even we saw it. We went to Game Fest 2010. We played it. We thought, okay, where's where's Crash? You got a license. We and did we actually, say literally, yeah. like you could put Crash in this. It's it's yeah. pretty easy yeah. to you, do this. You can spin. You can use the like, Aku mask. You can slide. But, you know, it's like, it's a basic basic two button. Um, top, top, up, yeah, it's like, 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 like a MOBA, like a kid's yeah. mo- entry level MOBA. Yeah. So you think you could each put Crash in this? We, like when it came out, it showed all the um, things. Like you know, you can do Crash with this. We waited and waited. And now we're finally getting it in in Skylanders Imaginators, which is such a fantastic name. Why did I think of it? Oh yeah, it's kind of <laughs> dumb. That's why. But hey, it's, it looks better than Superchargers anyway. 
Yeah. Yeah. Let's go about this. Oh, let's make a kart racing game of it. Are you fucking kidding me? Uh, yeah. Uh, but I mean, this is probably the only Skylander I'll actually buy. <laughs> In terms of like, you know, we did always say like, if Crash was ever just put into Skylanders, well, at least we get a decent figurine. Mm. Um, yeah, we've got a decent figurine. Honestly, the design of Crash, pretty good. Yeah. It's not classic, and it's not Titan. Well, it's arguably, it's pretty much what fans expect Crash to look like, really. It's that sort of nice middle ground. Is it? It's pretty much what Crash should look like, but there, it's not exactly the way you've seen it, it before. It kind of looks like the, um, Zembos' prototype artwork. Yeah, the people have been pointing it out. Um, a, the lot more bigger face type design he had. Mm. I really want to state here is that the weird thing now is that technically this is now the end of an era. What um, ironically I call like the wilderness years for Crash Bandicoot. I mean, it's, ironically I was watching Doctor Who when they talked about how the time from when Doctor Who was canned to the Paul McGann return and then of course the official return back in 2005. And with this, it's kind of in the same way that we've now can look back at that years of Crash, all the shoulda, coulda, wouldas, and just sort of surprised to thinking, yeah, it's been. <laughs> in a weird way, Crash, while there hasn't been a new game, it's never gone away. It's never truly disappeared from people's... No, I mean, we had, like, Crash Bandicoot Natural Car and Natural Car 2 on, on the mobile front. Uh, the cancelled racing game, the cancelled Crash Landed. Yeah, this is what I mean. Landed. It's like we've had from, you know, what I mean from the wilderness years, it's like pretty much from Mind of a Mutant. We had the mobile games, we've had interviews from the original games, the other games, you know, there were the Can Project games, revealing of them more sort of in-depth histories and constant rumours of revivals, remakes, you know, maybe Activision may sell it, maybe Sony has got it. Not even, even, got... even when Sierra was coming back, Activision was bring, brought it back, like, oh, we're going to do a new King's Quest, we're going to do a new Geometry Wars. Mm. I, I even said out loud, get them because they had it last time. Yeah, well, they were the last people to have it under the name, yeah. Yeah, when Sierra was an in-house, or kind of an in-house publisher, it wasn't actually pub. No. They, were, they were a publisher, they actually had um, Radical Entertainment do it. Yeah, exactly. But, and Traveller's Tales, but still, you could have had them develop one. Cause yeah. It would have made sense, but I was surprised if you actually are developing it now. Yeah. <laughs> but moving on, it's like we're now getting remasters of the original trilogy, which, on the one hand, yay, other hand, uh, I mean. It's not, well, it's actually worth mentioning because the. I was actually up night watching the Sunday press conference because I just felt like it had to be this year. It was pretty much every year at E3 or every yeah, year. Yeah, considering the last time we did the video, there was so much fucking news coming out. Yeah, exactly. I mean, every year it just seemed to be always the sort of shoulda, coulda, maybe, but didn't. And I did felt like it has to be this year. You know, it's the 20th anniversary. There's so much buzz going around with everybody on the internet constantly theorizing stuff. It, something has to happen this year. So the fact that it did happen... And what we saw was basically what looks like a redesign of Vince and Sandy Island's beginning act. And basically the first thing he said is that we are making remakes of Crash. It's funny worth mentioning because he mentions that first before the Skylanders thing. I think people would have actually preferred it that way. But even, know, exactly. if he did it the other way around, he's like, oh, here's Sky Crash Bandicoot and Skylanders. And only as a bonus for all PS4 users, we're remastering the Crash Bandicoot trilogy. Exactly. Um, so it is important that the fact they made that we are doing remasters of those games. In fact, a lot of people have been trying to theorize what exactly do they mean by remasters. And I'm pretty sure, this is my opinion, so I could be wrong, but whatever. I'm pretty sure this is going to take the same route as New and Tasty was with Old World's Abe's Odyssey, which is this will be the original three games, but redone for a modern, obviously with today's visuals and graphics and technology and stuff, but will akin to what those original games were, but with the added bonus of all the features that we have today. Yeah, my, my question is, and even I question this, and even Mike question as well, is the Crash 2 and 3 are nearly identical in terms of design. Hmm. You go to a warp room, complete these levels in any order, do a, get the crystals, get gems, and in Kree relics, then do a boss, move on to the next one, and the save system is just go to a giant screen. Crash 1 is the one is the odd one out. It is fundamentally the, the most difficult one, but it has the yeah. odd. It has very odd design choices. Like if you have a memory card, you can only save when doing the bonus. You changes. can only do it during a bonus level. Yeah. Yeah. If you die during the level, you lose all the box. All the boxes respawn. All the crate counts. Yeah. Yeah. Is doesn't count because if, if in the first level, if you 
die trying to get those line of crates, I mean, you, you have to go all the way back to the beginning and get the rest. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's the biggest pain in the ass. And all, yeah. And is the is the level is the level select on the world map is that going to be the same or is it just going to be like a warp, warp room for the island? I is is the basically my question is is any of the crash two and three influence on design going to pat going to go, the um move backwards into crash one? I was definitely going to say that because there's two ways of doing it. Is either I was actually thinking about this a lot as saying are they going to try and implement say any of the moves or features from two and three and put them into one? which will make a difference. It will feel different. It's worth mentioning that whatever these games are going to be, they will play differently anyway. Yeah. I mean, there's yeah, no... Cra- like I said, Crash 2 and 3 had a very tight control scheme, and a lot of friends ran animation for the for the um, uh, crawl, skate, and high... Yeah, I mean, put it this way, I mean, Crash... Jump. Yeah, put it this way, Crash 1, you know, you pretty much have to play it with the D-pad of all things, you know, it didn't even use the analog stick, which in this day and age, who the hell uses... I mean, most games don't even use that apart from just selecting items now. Hmm. So, so, so that could actually, so will and Crash One is very stiff, even hmm. with a D pad. I played get, I played Spyro with a D pad, and it doesn't feel as stiff as it, as it would with the analog stick. Yeah. Personally, what I like to see, particularly with Crash One, is that for many years we've heard from both Jason, Andy, and um, Dave, one of the producers from Universal. Which, again, ironically, one of the things that happened during the Wilderness series is this whole. Thing. He was a producer on the original game. He kind of got shafted because Naughty Dog felt sort of shit ended by Universal. Though really, he said actually we weren't being that nasty. But either way, what's worth mentioning is that when they were designing Crash, I mean, one thing they've always said is like we wanted to make this like a sort of a, almost like a movie experience. As in, basically, you play the game from the very beginning and you go all the way to the very end without it feeling like a video game. In terms of like you go from each level of the island onto Cortex's base. And, again, they could never achieve that on the PlayStation 1, you know. And they tried again in Jack and Daxter, which more or less got it, but they wanted to try and tell a more cohesive story. And then by the time they got to Uncharted, particularly with 4, you know, that game is pretty much like a a movie in a sense. You know, it's got a beginning, middle, and end, you know, at-wise. And it feels seamless, you know. You go from gameplay into cutscene using the in-game engine. And what I would love to see, particularly with Crash 1, more particularly with Crash 1 rather than 2 and 3... It's if they try and redo that initial goal all those years ago. If like Terry's Visions could do away as in when you start the game off, you pretty much it's almost like a seamless experience. You go from each island, no loading screens, onto the next bit. Every major moment in the game is bookended with an incidental cutscene. You know, for instance, one level will end with crashing on the top of the mountain, the rocks start bothering, he then slays down, skids in the air, flips over, bashes into a hut, and he meets Papa Rapper as the first boss. And yeah, I know that's obviously. I, I can see, I can see that, but yeah, I, w- I won't. But then again, it could be the same as Sonic CD remastered or Data Tentacle recently. Yeah, yeah. Is, exactly. is it going to be? It's going to be a faithful remake or a adaptable remake? Yeah, I mean, this is the only thing I'm is of the mentioning because I think it would be personally. I don't think it would be stupid if they were just to do the original PS1 games and upscale them essentially because I think it's like well. You can already get them anyway on like PS3 and PS4, can't you? Yeah, but, I, 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 you can, I can play PS1 games on the PS3. I got Crash 2 and 3. Exactly. So, so I, it would I, be... I, I've, there's no shortage of those games unless you try and find a black label, in which case, good fucking luck. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it would be silly if it was just that. It's like, oh, it's the original game, but just widescreen. It's like, who the hell wants to do that? All they could do, like you said, with Day of the Tentacle, is in. If they do a featurette, like, for instance, you could switch from the new version the old version of the game to see how different they are. If, if, the, if you have the original trilogy unlockable... Yeah, exactly. Great. But, again, my little thing is, little question as well is, is this going to be a multi-platform or is it going to be PlayStation exclusive? I'm pretty see? sure this is going to be a PlayStation exclusive. I mean, let's yeah. be fair, this is Sony... I mean, let's, I mean it's worth mentioning that for, since the PS4, there has been countless hints, winks nods, visual references to Crash Bandicoot from day fucking one. So the last thing they want to do is then go like, oh yeah, they'll put him on PS4 and then we'll make him on every other system. Oh, no, 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 no. We want him on our system, because that's his home. Yeah, so, so. Sony fanboys have had Crash since day one, so they're going to have keep Crash, even though Rafa Cortex onwards has been multi-platform. He's, I mean, ever since Naughty Dog let the series go, it's been a multi-platform series anyway, but... Um, 
even Skylanders, funny enough, that will be viewed to you. You can use the sc- Crash figure on the other versions of Skylanders for, say, the 360, Wii U, or Xbox One. Um, but yeah, I mean, ironically, the other things we're mentioning is that how are they going to release these games? Because in my mind, I thought they would do it like what they tried to do with Sonic 4, is in release them separately as digital games and then do them as one box title. But apparently there's pre-orders of them as box titles already. So I don't know. In your opinion, would you prefer it if they came out one after another or if you had them on a the disc and say you finish one level of the game, you unlock Crash 1 and 2, two and 3's levels afterwards? I prefer it be a retail box, or it can be downloadable as well, since I think I have two remastered collections on the PS3. I have Jack and I have Sly. Mm. Jack gives you a menu and you choose Jack 1, 2, or 3, obviously. Yeah. Whereas digitally, for the Sly collection, I can download those games individually. So mm. if I so I just go into the PS, PS3 dashboard and just choose Sly 1, 2, or 3. Yeah. So it could work both ways. It could be a digital release and a physical release. But between the two, I'd rather have a physical game. Yeah. Like, I just recently bought Fallout 4. I could have bought that digitally, but no, I want a physical case. Oh, yeah, yeah. Always on physical media. Yeah, I mean, I always had a feeling they would do that later on. It's just initially, how would they release them to begin with, if they do them as... Oh, they'll they'll do it simultaneously right now. Right. Like, before Lego Star Wars Force Awakens even released, it's already the digital versions of the collector's edition and the original on on the PlayStation Store. Yeah. Uh, so, question, two questions on the Crash. One, are you getting the Crash Bandicoot Skylander if you're a Crash fan? For just that, yeah. Just, 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 the, just, the, just the Skylander itself. Not yeah, the just for the figurine, yeah. Not Imaginators. And yeah. two, are you, exci- are you excited or concerned of the Crash remasters? Because I'm both mostly excited. Like I said before, yeah. is, is Crash 1 going to be like Crash 2 and 3? Exactly. I mean, I'm definitely going in with a sense that these will be, they will, I just know going in that they will play differently from their original counterparts, but I'm pretty sure they will be more or less the spirit of the original games, but just updated, which is ideally what we want. Hmm. And as well, actually, it's worth mentioning this, I'll make this the last point, but um, when you think about it, for many, all the years we've had all these, like, what if they did this, what if they did that, and I can sort of say at this point now, everything fans have been theorizing or like to happen, in a strange way, it has happened. I mean, first of all, we've had people saying, would be great if Naughty Dog worked on Crash again, and they have. The fact he's, a, he's in Uncharted 4 as a kind of bonus game is a weird thing, but they have done it. Wouldn't be great if Sony had some control over Crash. They have, you know, he's going to be a PS4 exclusive, you know, both in Skylanders and these remasters of the original trilogy. So there's that. Act- wouldn't it be great if Activision did something with it? They have, and they're doing a collaboration with Sony, so they actually are doing something with the license. And the fact, you know, you know, even the what if or what if Crash was in Skylanders, the fact it's happened, and more importantly, it's worth really nailing down at this point is that Crash is guest starring in Skylanders not becoming a part of Skylanders. There is a big difference. And particularly that has been the thing I think fans have been worried the most, is in if Crash was in Skylanders, that means, well, that's the series done, because there'll just be another character in the millions of other oddball creatures in there, like Spyro. But the fact that they made it clear that he is a guest starring in this game as an exclusive character, I think that's really the thing that I think has made fans happy the most, because it's like, we get both ends. You know, we get to have we get to have Crash back in his own game series, but also he gets to be part of this little side series as well. It's just a fun character. Uh, well, two things, two final things to say. One, if the Crash remaster sells very well, would there be a possibility of a Spyro trilogy remastered? Because mm. that would be something. Because I wouldn't mind playing Spyro trilogy again. That'd be but, interesting. That would be interesting. It would be all the upgrades. And two, it took you six. Fucking years to do this. Uh, Six long years. This is one thing I've learned is that nof- when people say we're doing this now, it's never really in real time. It takes a long, long time for things to happen. Yeah, but still, we asked that question six years ago. I know. They could have done it. They could have done it in giant swap force or whatever. I know. I know. I know. But put it this way. 
you know, in a weird way, the thing you want to happen every time when we say, I wish the things you want in life do come true. It's just, you never know how long it takes for it to come true. Whatever. We fucking called it. I mean, they, I know. Know. <laughs> and they, they know it. They know it. We fucking called it. 